Hey guys, welcome back. It's Alex with Alex's Reef. So, an update for Rico's Nano Tank Challenge for April. Uh, for one, I'd like to say sorry. Normally, I try to upload a video every week. About the first two weeks of April were really rough, a lot going on, so I wasn't able to do any up uploading. Uh, but I did shoot some video, take a lot of pictures, and if you follow me on Instagram, you are able to get up to date every week with brand new pictures, especially if there's any new additions to the tank. So, big update, lots of changes going on. As you can see, this was the current reef. Uh, a lot going on there, some feeding, so everything's kind of cloudy and go and some particulates in the water. But like I said, a big update, so let's go ahead and take a look at everything and get it going so that we can get fully caught up for the full month of April. All right, guys, so we're going to be moving on forward here, and what you're going to see is some of the additions that were recently added to the tank. So taking a look here, this footage was shot at the beginning of the month, actually. Uh, so there is a sand sifting starfish that was added. The Xenia is not really too happy right there at that point in time. Of course, you see some other things like the snail shells and stuff, uh, and where the difference of where the pallies are and some of the zoas. And sorry for the blue tent for some reason the light got it just wrong uh, but as you can see corals are on the bottom and stuff so we're going to see a contrasting between photos of past and present as well as an example of how life still makes it into the tank as that sand sifting starfish was added in but here's a critter that has snuck in as a little snail i have no idea where he came from brand new was on the rocks caught kind of solid moved him up to the front of the glass and i have no idea what kind of snail he is um, so a little hitchhiker that has made his way in there, but he sure is a cleaner on those rocks. He has turned some of the spots barren where he is at when it comes to any of the diatoms. So here we have some uh, pulsing exenia. Uh, it's kind of grown a little bit. It's basically just one stock and that one stock started out as two separate heads. That one stock has now become four heads and it looks like a fifth head is starting to split off from that stock so pretty soon I we might be getting some growth and I've kept him contained to this little tiny rock that I've buried in the sand here for right now uh, but there's just some pulsing action for you so he hasn't gone crazy and taken over my tank like most people happen when they get Xenia and this camera doesn't do it justice it picks it up as white hair but in person it's very pink and colorish and then we're going to move over to a blue hue here uh, thanks to some orange filters and as you can see they just don't really have any color in the blue light at all but a little bit of flow on him he pulses a little bit maybe the flow is keeping him restricted to it's growing a little bit slower than normal all right moving on over to the mushroom here uh, this is a great example of corals that happen to change color on you when you buy them and when I bought this guy he was really itty bitty had like a really creamy blue turquoise center and then he kind of grew out and then there's a little bit of a blue kind of a maroon color so completely got grew in size on me as well as changed color uh, now it's not always for the worst because depending on how the light hits him depends when it gets to certain colors like this you can see more of the blue in the center of course he's more shrank up there and this is more of when I got him in the beginning of the month and so you can see for forever he looked like this until he expanded with that purple uh, kind of maroon color and just the light tints of blue in the middle. Uh, and and so this is like I said at the beginning when I kind of got him towards the, you know the end of last month beginning of this month and I was expecting him to kind of stay more of this color but you never know what you're gonna get and this is a perfect example of them changing colors now here's under the Atenix uh, and with the orange filters as you can tell he was kind of grumpy but that light fluorescent color that's there that's something big that I had seen when I originally had him so moving on here, uh, you can see the macro algae in the background, and this is the palm calerpa algae that I had. Uh, so the original stocks that came in, they started to die off. 
Um, some of them are kind of still hanging in there, but the leaves as they've died off have picked up cyanobacteria on them. And that's basically where the cyanobacteria is staying on, but they have already started to branch and grow extra branches. And this is just the one that's on the side. The one that was in the back and this one on the side are starting to um, branch out and starting to grow. And they don't grow super fast, so they're easy to take care of. But just a prime example of this is what it was uh, about a week ago, and this is what it was when it originally came into the tank. So as you can kind of tell, it came in, the branches kind of started to die off and not do so well. But it went from this to what you had just seen. And that was just over a matter of maybe three weeks. Uh, and it's going strong. Now moving on. We have some of the uh, zoas that I had first picked up uh, off of the uh, frog spawn branch when I originally got that octo frog spawn. Uh, so when they came in, they were kind of super green. And from a top down view, they still kind of keep that green, like a very uh, bright lime green. But looking at it from the sides, they have this uh, turquoise blue color. So an example of how you can see a coral from above and see completely different colors to when you're looking straight on at it. So this is it during the daylight. And it's grown from what started out as two heads to about four, and I think we're starting a fifth head. Now, in the Utenix, under some orange filters, you can see it here. Got that super uh, blue hue going on with it, kind of a green, but more or less kind of a bright blue. And then kind of under like a 10K, uh, really still sticking with that blue color for them. And they're kind of bunching up on here. They weren't really as happy. Uh, when I shot this and this was of course them a couple weeks ago uh, towards the beginning of the month compared to the last two uh, parts of the video that you just saw that was more recent here at the end of the month where I was shooting them so again huge growth on them huge expansion uh, it, it's it's nice to see uh, unfortunately Zoas are somewhat bulletproof so it's definitely not an example of a reef that is thriving but at least they're growing and that's great for me so moving on over to a coral that at my local reef store I had stocked for about three weeks as I was trying to watch it grow and see how it reacted after it was freshly fragged. Uh, this finger leather here. Now under the daylight like this, it's not very colorful, but compared to when I got it where it was only three stalks, one up in the middle and then kind of two off to the side and it was super small. Now there's about four stalks and a fifth nub starting to grow onto the side of it and multiple heads from each stock growing out. Uh, and we've already shed it once. Now this is it under the Atenix with the orange filter. It's got a very green fluorescent on the top of it. Uh, and, and overall, it's just nice. Uh, so that's very nice. Now moving on to some of the zoas here. These zoas were actually on another rock. Um, it's kind of controversial on how they go because the ones here on the left them super bright green but they kind of had stopped opening up the other day and so they got moved up here as to where the other ones really didn't open up on the other rock but moved them up here and now they opened up but they're the same kind they're the nuclear zoas uh, so I don't know what's really going on with the ones that are the frag compared to the other ones seeing as they're the same now here's them under the uh, blue tenix with the orange filter on sorry about the blur it really didn't get it and this was it before they got Got moved about earlier in the month and you can tell like I said that one it was really opened up it's really got that bright green but after I shot this about a day or two after that they kind of just stopped opening up altogether so I don't know if something's attacked them or if they've just been irritated and haven't opened now moving on this is a brand new coral that we had brought in uh, I found him actually laying, <laughs> half of him was laying face down in the sand. So I thought it was only one head when I got it. It's actually two and one head on the back I thought was completely dead. So it was free. The owner gave it to me since it broke off of the main colony. Uh, and she wasn't going to do anything with it. And so it was just set in the sand and died. Now I brought it home. It had a little bit of damage. It's puffed up like you can see. And hopefully the rim will repair itself. What I haven't noticed, or what I did notice, I should say, is on the back where the second head was, a little bit of green has started to come back on that. So I think the second head, although I thought it was dead, and it might be, 
it it might be able to recover itself uh, due to there just being a little bit of the coral left because I might have been able to rescue it before it completely died off in the sand. That was it under the Atenix. Now moving on to the uh, second half of that frog spawn that when I was cutting it down so it would fit better on the rock, uh, the smaller head had broken off from it and originally thought it was going to die. And I dipped it in some of the Brightwell Medicore dip when I did that, it has turned around and made a surprising recovery. It's repairing the wall around the head of itself as well as starting to grow and blossom into a more fuller uh, baby frog spawn. So my plan with this guy is he may not be sticking around in the tank. If somebody ends up wanting to trade for him, I might put him up for a trade for another type of... Uh, uh, euphilia. Now this was it earlier in the month. As you can tell the difference, he's very more closed up here, not as full, and he looked like this for quite a while. Uh, compared to now over the last couple weeks, he's been doing great. So the big difference here between, you know, at the beginning of the month to just the end of the month of how long the time frame can take and just the difference of a coral having time to repair itself and continue to grow. Uh, so that's a beautiful thing to see. This is more of an established uh, statement that something is growing for me. And now here he is under the blues of the Atenix. And this was more recent and you can tell a much fuller head for that octo spawn or frog spawn uh, baby. So here we go. Another new addition was this clover polyp. Uh, it's a kryptonite clover polyp with a bright green neon in the center of the cloves. Now, he is a pretty cool little guy. Uh, I tried to move him from the flag, frag plug so I could put him right on the rock. Unfortunately, uh, they seem to be pretty delicate on that matter. And I put him over here just so he can kind of grow in the back and fill out this rock. Although clove polyps tend to be a little bit more of a slow growing coral, I've also noticed that uh, they tend to be a little bit more on the picky side of, they, they haven't quite wanted to always open up, so they're more stubborn than anything, but they are starting to come around. Now this is them under the uh, Tenix with some orange filter. Uh, they show up super bright green when they're under heavy blues. Uh, so it's really nice to see and they kind of look like nice bright green flowers. So here we move on over to the Mac Daddy, uh, the Lobothelia. So he's kind of been here sitting in the middle of the tank. Uh, due to his possibility of being super aggressive to the other corals, I haven't quite decided where I want to put him yet. Uh, so if you have any suggestions, drop them down in there because I know if he gets too close to some corals, he is really going to make their day miserable. Now under the daylight, not always the prettiest. He does have some purples and some blues here, uh, but moving over to more of the Atenix and the 10K, he looks fantastic. Now under the blue lights and with the orange filters, he, it really didn't capture him too much. He's kind of closed up. He gets some dark rings on him, but more of a blue purple. So really the blue light doesn't really help it. But moving under the 10K, you can really see some of the colors, the purples, the blues, uh, and some of the reds and greens. Uh, so he's actually a very pretty coral. Uh, this was just shot here at the beginning, about the beginning of April compared to the last two was shot within this last week or so. Uh, so I hope to see him grow, although I kind of figure that he's probably more of a slow growing and highly aggressive coral. So again, if anybody has any ideals on placement of him where he might not mess up somebody's day, please just let me know. Now moving on to another coral that could ruin everybody's tank and by ruin I mean take over some green star polyps. Now here in the daylight, they just don't get their justice on their color, although they are absolutely gorgeous and a really a dark neon green. Now this was shot, it's starting to encrust all over the frag plug and it's moving to that back wall, which the idea of it is, is that I would really like to have it just take over that back wall and have a nice green uh, seagrass mat all over that back wall to kind of just move around in the flow. 
And like I said, though, highly uh, explosive growth rate. When it came in, it barely opened up. And this was it when it came, you know, a couple weeks after it came in, right after I put it onto the back wall. It hardly went from opening up to doing this to the explosion that you just saw on growth. And yes, I know there's a little pest starfish in there. I have to take them out. So jumping down just a little bit, we move over to the uh, original stock of the Octo Frog Spawn that I had brought into the tank. Where that smaller head basically had broken off from when I was cutting him down. Uh, originally I didn't know that there was a smaller head there when I bought it. And to my surprise, uh, one day he, clo he kind of closed up when I first brought him out of out of the bag and I noticed that there was a second head so like I said I was trying to frag him down a little bit and that head just happened to break away from him so it really you know I thought I was gonna lose that second head but as you can see it was growing back and the original head is doing just fine I think it's actually starting to grow back where the other head had broken away and just left a little bit of it there now this was it under the Atenix kind of a super blue green it really just didn't get the justice it's more of a green and then moving under the 10k lighting this was it about two weeks or not two weeks, but at the early beginning April, uh, more of a green, blue kind of showing off the top there. Uh, definitely though, you can see the difference in just how expanded it is from the beginning of April towards the end here for us. So like I said, over a month, you'd just be surprised how much these corals can grow, even if it doesn't seem like they're growing much, just the behaviors and things that they demonstrate to uh, show growth patterns. Oh no, everybody, catching the house on fire. That's right, if you saw the corner of it in the Lobothelia shot, there is some Galaxia now in the tank. And this is a coral that I've always liked, always wanted a piece of it. Um, and again, just talking about a highly aggressive coral. Although it is a super slow growing coral, super highly aggressive with the sleeper tentacles that if you do happen to purchase them, make sure that you give them plenty of space. I think this bad boy's gonna camp up on top of a rock, which I've already moved him to, and you're about to see it under the, t the Atenix. Uh, he's got his own little home, happy, swings his sleepers everywhere now, and has fully come out, no longer kind of tucked in like you just saw, uh, where that was about a week ago, last week when I got him, and this is now in the sleeper sleepers are going everywhere every night within about three inches. So moving over to the pallies, which I've moved off of kind of that centerpiece and moved them over here. Uh, kind of since I'm going to let that uh, Galaxia take over the very top rock, I figure what's better than putting the pallies on the bottom rock and letting them kind of take over that rock. Now I am going to try and find some other pallies to mix match in here. And this is another coral of an example that can be different colors, even under this daylight. It can be kind of this ugly drab color, or it can turn super neon like lime green and I normally notice the lime green color when it's going to be doing more heads and this thing went from like six heads or five heads to nine so this is it a couple weeks ago uh, towards the end of last month beginning of April and you can just tell from what you saw before to what you see now and this is kind of that color that even during the daylight you can see this color when it starts to seem like more heads it's going to grow more heads but this color is a very pretty color uh, so seeing this coral under this light which is more of what I saw it when I bought it looking like this uh, which is very nice. Uh, sorry for the color shift. So now we'll shortly be moving over to the blue Atenix to see it under there as well. So like I said though, col corals can shift and change colors just based off of what you see when you buy them at your LFS to when you take them at home. Now under the Atenix blues, you can see it. It looks super bright neon green with all these heads. Uh, this sucker loves to eat. Uh, unfortunately, he does let me feed him and he takes it all. And moving over to the Acan and Feather Duster. Now this is more of a love-hate relationship, especially for those two. I kind of had to move the Acan away from that Feather Duster a little bit because 
in the current. Every once in a while, one of the feather duster uh, bristles would get stuck and the A-can would try to eat him. Uh, so I kind of felt bad for both of them. So I kind of had to separate them out. But A-cans can shift and change colors based off of the light and the tanks that they're in. So here you kind of see the outer like orange brown ring with the green center. Uh, well, <laughs> moving over to these uh, Atenic or the 10k light you can see them with the green rings uh and kind of that that uh, drab center which kind of just doesn't have very much color here but he is super green well if i put him under super bright blues that green actually turns to a very pretty gold yellow uh, but one thing that i still did not know until i saw it the other day and it's still growing and it still had some colors as you can see what here looks like little white lines running down the sides well those white lines you'll see it in just a minute if you look closely uh, you've got the the green, the little white lines in between the browns, and coming up here in the 10Ks, those white lines, that's right. The very bright neon yellow green, those white lines, which are actually an orange color under blues, uh, and that's on every single head. So that's something about how they can change color. Now moving on over here to the Zoas, I do have some other Zoas on that front part. The, the that front frag it's uh the neon or the nuclear zoas which you've already seen those are on the rocks these are ones that were left on that frag and i was just going to let them regrow and take that frag over i do have here on the closest here was kind of a uh, fire and ice a red with blue center uh which during the daylight it's got it looks very browned out with the blue center but under the blue lights it turns to a very bright red and then in the back side there I have the Green Bay Packers uh, just because one of my wife's friends is a huge Green Bay Packers fan I don't think she's seen this coral yet when she does she's probably gonna give us all a high five now here was the Green Bay Packers that was closed up and everybody else was kind of just sitting here uh, in this area and the snails and the hermit crabs kept knocking them all over and as you could tell uh, a piece of that nuclear zoa that I moved up onto the rock it got knocked off as well. Uh, so just kind of an example of what happens every once in a while with your frag plugs when they're in there and because of that they wouldn't open up and show their prettiness so I went ahead and ordered that frag rack and then here just the other day here's an example of it under the atenic blues you can see that nuclear zoas and the green bay packers and unfortunately the fire and ice there it just didn't want to cooperate and show us its colors Hey guys, thank you very much for sticking along with me. I know it was a long update. Uh, sorry I didn't get any updates out earlier in the month. Now, thank you for coming by. Like, comment, and subscribe. Join us back later. And just thank you to all my subscribers that we have right now. We're growing steady, and thank you all for watching.